Hello and welcome to this course on humanoid rigging in Houdini. In this course we'll be making a humanoid rig for games, and this rig will be made using Kinney effects. What we're going to be covering is a basic complete rig and export system. This rig is not an optimized rig. Instead I've chosen to focus on the structure of the rig, and to explore what is needed to make a rig in Kinney effects. And because of this I'm focusing on clarity in the structure rather than efficiency. KineFX gives us a lot of control over what we're doing, and therefore there are a lot of options for optimization, and I may cover this at some point in the future, but for now I want to create a working rig. So this is the rig we are creating. I've tried to keep everything as neat and straightforward as possible. We will actually be constructing this rig in two parts, this being the second part of the rig. For the first part of the rig we'll be building a skeleton. We are going to be creating the skeleton separately from the rig itself, and the point of this is to provide us with flexibility in the rig. We want a skeleton that has correct transforms, and we are going to be generating those transforms specifically. This skeleton should also be reusable for multiple rigs. I want to be able to pose this skeleton for multiple characters so that I do not have to recreate a skeleton every single time I am creating a rig. What we want to be able to do with Kinney effects and this applies to Houdini in general, is to be able to create a set of tools which we can use. So instead of just creating a skeleton, we're designing this to be the basis for a more flexible system overall. So there are a number of features to the skeleton, one of which is we're using multiple different spines. This will allow us to examine how different methods of creating the spine influence how the rig works in Houdini. So here we have three basic options for the spine. The first is a full bone spine, which is designed for export to Unity. The reason I want it to be compatible with Unity is there is a lot of motion capture available which is compatible with this format. There are then a couple of more detailed spines. The first of these is a curved spine, and the second is a straight spine. And these will allow us to examine different approaches towards rigging the spine. We are also creating a custom node to orient our joints. So for example, if I need to adjust the skeleton to another character, I can merely move the points of the leg, and we'll always generate correct orientations for the leg. So we have a completely adjustable skeleton that will generate good transforms for us, and this will apply for any part of the skeleton, so for example it will apply for the arms as well. Next we'll take a look at the rig itself. Here we're manipulating the rig itself. Now this geometry is reasonably hefty, so it's not the fastest manipulation in the world. So I'll turn the geometry off, and we can work with the skeleton faster, and it will also allow us to see what is happening more easily. This skeleton has three main systems which we're working with. We have global controllers for the IK rig, we have local controllers for the IK rig, and we've got an FK system. The local controls will be affected by the hierarchy. So anything that is part of the hierarchy will follow with the local controls. So for example, when I move the hips, we'll see that the chest and the hands follow, or more precisely in this case, the right hand will follow with the local hierarchy. In this case, the left hand is being influenced by the global controls. We also create a system for blending between local and global controls. So for example, we can blend between the local chest over here, so I can have a completely local control here and we have tangents which will influence the spine. We can, however, use a global control, and this will be positioned independently of the rig. We have multiple ways of controlling this blend, so we can blend the translation and rotation individually, or if we choose, we can set our blend control so that we're blending translation and rotation simultaneously. This spine also responds to stretch controls. We are using two different algorithms to control the rotation of the spine, the one is a vector-based linear interpolation, and the other is a quartonian-based spherical linear interpolation. We also have an IK-FK blend that applies for the majority of the skeleton, where almost all of the controls have individual IK controls as well as FK controls. For the legs we have an IK-FK blend system which will apply for the entirety of the leg, so this means a straightforward blend between the leg and the foot. We implement a straightforward reverse foot rig, and this contains all the standard pivots you'd expect. We have the IKFK blend here as well, and the IKFK blend will respect stretching. 
I've implemented a very basic IK matching system, which will allow us to blend our FK joints between the IK and FK positions. So for the arms, as we've already seen, we have the local and global controls. We'll be able to manipulate the hand independently of the arm, or we can base the hand's rotation off the arm's effector. This functionality does not just apply to the local controls, it applies equally with the global controls. The other main feature of the arm is we have a dynamic shoulder. This means that if we raise the arm above the line of the shoulder, the shoulder will rotate to compensate. This is a far more natural behavior for the shoulder. We have IK and FK controls for the shoulder as well. There will also be global and local controls for the eyes and the head. This will allow us to have the eyes move with the head or independently of the rotation of the head. We'll be able to move each eye independently as well. And we'll have IK, FK blending for all of the major joints of the head. The other thing which I'll cover is the weight capture setup. At the moment, I'm only covering the setup. I'm not dealing with anything more complicated than that. I may cover things like weight painting in the future, but I'd only want to do that after covering more significant rig optimizations. We then have the basics for an exporting pipeline. There's a basic polygon reduction system, which is the start of a level of detail system. We also allow for a root bone setup. This can be very important in a game's pipeline, as it is required by a number of game engines. We then have an export pipeline, which will allow us to export the character, both with a root bone and without a root bone. We will also be able to export the animation separately, and this can be done both with a root bone and without a root bone. So that is the rig setup as I currently have it. I thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoy the course.